In this example, we will be explaining how to properly decompose your system into subsystems. Our system of interest is going to be a road bike. So this is the road bike that we're going to try and decompose. And what you've got here are the components that we are trying to highlight. So we went ahead and made blocks for each of these components that are called out. And now we're going to decompose our bike. So a, a good way to explain good modeling is to show an example of poor modeling. So this right here is an example of poor modeling. As you can see, it's very hard to understand. We, the, the model is too flat, as in it would make sense to decompose this bike into more subassemblies before we get to the component level. So with that, we'll jump forward. This is also an example of poor modeling except it has the opposite um, problem. You have too many levels instead of too few. So we, we've decomposed the bike into not frame and frame, and then interfaces, or interfaces for the rider, interfaces for the road, drive train. We've got tube and not tube. So um, these are, when you use the word not, that is not a great way to decompose or create subassemblies. Additionally, when you're using the interfaces, to what it's going to be interfacing with. That's not the best way to decompose a system. Additionally, we see this not stay has one component within it. That's generally bad practice to, it's kind of redundant to have one part within an assembly. You could just remove this not stay and put fork up a level. So uh, high level, there are two many levels. The components are on different levels, which I would try to avoid in most cases. So what I mean by levels is this is the first level, this is the second level, the third level is right here, then we've got our fourth level, and then we have our fifth level. And so our components, that our bike components that you can see in the containment tree, they're on the fifth level and the fourth level, which is not ideal. Um, it, so and then we've got, uh, should not use the not terminology, should not break up by interfacing. Do not confuse decomposition with generalization relationships. So I would say that this tube versus not tube would be more of a taxonomy sort of situation rather than a decomposition relationship. And we'll just kind of explain that. So this is the generalization relationship. And so we've got like a tubular structure block and it would have uh, value properties that are associated such as like inner diameter outer diameter length of the tubular structure and so these all these components down tube seat tube top tube and head tube are types of tubular structure as well as the frame structure so tubular structure is a type of frame structure chain stay seat stay and fork are a type of frame structure and frame structure has these value properties of material and length so what that means is i can go into top tube and it will pull all of the values from tubular structure and from frame structure. So if I go in here, I go to attributes, you can see inner diameter, outer diameter, length, material, and length again. So uh, we've copied these. So that's not ideal. So I would just go ahead and remove this because it's been in there twice. Now when we go in here, attributes, we can see no copied elements. Uh, and then this one, you would only get these material and length. So we'll just show that material and length. All right. So this is the taxonomy where you can inherit value properties from the higher levels of generalization. So moving on to an example of good modeling. So this is kind of like the Goldilocks approach of it's not the, the model is not too flat, nor is it too deep. There's we've got five main subassemblies of the bike. We've got the wheel assim, the seat assim, the frame assim, the controls assim, and the propulsion assim. You can see this is much easier to understand um, quickly. And it also allowed us to realize that there was a missing part in our original bike, which was this seat. When we built out the seat assim, we just saw that there's a seat post. And we're like, well, what about the seat? So if we go back here, you can see that the seat is not actually called out, but that's obviously the part of the bike that we want to call out. So I went ahead and created that block. So if you've got good architecture, then it is much easier to understand where your holes are and you can fill those holes by, in this case, creating that seat block. 
Um, additionally, so the system is broken up into a reasonable amount of subsystems. Uh, the rule of thumb is five plus or minus two. So just try and stay around that. If it's too few, then your model decomposition gets too tall. And if there's too, if there's way too many, then it's too hard to comprehend. So this is too many, this is too few, this is just right. So the next step would be your bike gets more complex and you go from just having this around 20 uh, parts or uh, components and your engineers would come back and give you further refinement and say, okay, there's actually like 68 components. So if you've got good architecture, then it will make sense where these 68 components would map to these sub-assemblies, wheel assem, seat assem, frame assem, controls assem, or propulsion assem. If you have poor architecture, then it becomes kind of clunky and you don't understand where to put your blocks as you get more refined and you have more components. So I hope that this bike example helps explain and um, help you understand decomposing the system into subsystems in the best way. Thanks.